So much of what I talk about heart and center today is about relationships and building a sense of team and community because when you do, you'll look out for each other so that we'll take action and do the right thing to be a coach rather than a cop. Am I right? Mom struggled to get up. She turned to my, to my dad and said, well, Johnny, after 40 years of being with you, I'm pretty tired of you too. <laughs> We need to look at our people and see through them to what they value, their families, their obstacles. When we connect with people and lead from our heart and really show that we care and get out there and listen to them, we can move from positional power to personal power. People want to see us. They want to hear from us. They see us as a coach rather than a cop. We can move them from overt or superficial compliance to deeper and lasting forms of commitment. presentation was phenomenal. It was tremendous. It was incredible and it was empowering and it gave me an epiphany. It was phenomenal. <laughs> it was by far the best closing keynote that we've had in the 30 year history of this conference. David's work and insights have been featured in business and legal resources, industrial safety and hygiene news, and ASSE's flagship publication, Professional Safety. David has spoken in all 50 states throughout Canada, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. I started speaking not because I wanted to, but because others told me I had to. Others told me I had a gift, a story, a passion to inspire others. I believe I'm fulfilling a big part of my life's mission when I get people home safe. Some organizational leaders, tell me that they've reduced injury rates by more than 90%, cut down human factors errors by more than 50%. They come back and tell me that they've, they've led the way with safety and that inspires me to do more, to want to do more for them. In the organizations that I work with that have the most outstanding safety performance, they've developed a sense of family and community because their leaders are transparent and they open up. Give me some love, Paul. Turn to your neighbor and give him a hug. Just because this isn't about productivity and safety, it's about safe productivity. I'm working with more and more organizations that are they're tapping into personal power rather than positional power. Avery Dennison, 175 facilities worldwide without a recordable incident. Exxon Mobil in Clinton, New Jersey, 12 years without a recordable. Rail America, throughout Northern California, over two years without a recordable. Can I hear you say it's possible? Unbelievable. We have nothing but great comments from everybody who's came in. One guy even said, best conference he's ever been to and the best speaker he's ever had. Very powerful, very inspirational, and very motivational. He made it personal, he made it funny, he involved the people. Great speaker. He hit it out of the park because it's all about relationships and the heart. Fantastic. I would encourage all y'all. I think it is well worth any money that you could ever spend, especially when it comes to safety. As I have so many people come up after the conference and said, we're going to hire that guy. The message that he sent was so wonderful. I, I was in tears. It was beautiful. You're an awesome speaker there. I love you. I want to invite you to talk to my children. <laughs> Because people don't care about the place that you occupy on some organizational chart. They care about the place that you occupy in the hearts and minds of those people who work for and with you. When we get too comfortable and complacent with the numbers that we might embrace, and I often tell leaders, the very numbers that you value and embrace will not drive your people, but the way that you value and embrace your people's safety will drive your numbers. Those companies that you contract with want to make sure that you're taking care of your people through safety because they know in doing so, you're more disciplined, you're more focused, you're more productive, you have a quality-driven organization. We need everybody in this room to step up to be a better safety coach. How many people think they can by a show of hands? If all aspects of your organization aren't great, like safety, if safety isn't great, you can't be as great as you need to be or can be. It was here in Western Pennsylvania, at the construction sites and in the steel mills, that I began to feel passion for people and their safety. Because it was here where my dad worked and where he had friends and co-workers 
who were seriously injured, even killed. Life was very dispensable then. I had a great mom and dad, people who cared deeply for others. I want to move that forward with the organizations I work within, to show others how to care, to show others how to leave their own legacy for good, for the health, for the well-being of other people and their safety. That's my hero, my dad. Man, our dads paid the price. The greatest generation. On one evening, my father said, son, we fought to get what you now have. And you think all this safety stuff is too much. The paperwork, the protocol, the meetings. He said, all this safety stuff is for you. Take advantage of it. It's for you and your family. You need to have a plan for your organization. A plan for everyone to step up to be a great coach, to tap into the power of relationships and build a sense of community, and to clarify the personal importance of working safely. I mean, I always bring my father's hat with me. Same hat that's shown in the picture. The hat from West Virginia University that my father wore so proudly because of me. So with my father's hat, with your father's hat, I ask you, where's your hat? Where's your heart? And how will you begin to lead here today?